for his body I actually primed everything with a, with a spray because it's bigger so I used mechanical standard grey and now I'm gonna do something like a zenithal primer with a red one. Moving on to the outfit, for um, what I've decided to do is have the shirt looking like a jeans t-shirt, that's why I'm using this one. I've experimented with some colors on it, uh, on my hand, and I think this is probably the best, because it really looks like blue jeans. And for the jacket, we're probably gonna do a light, uh, light brown, and he has some harnesses from the backpack, probably gonna do them uh, dark brown but uh, the harness is for sure do by hand after the shirt finishes i'll mask the shirt and uh, go with the contrast paint i haven't decided which one yet on the jacket Now what I have done in the meantime is that on his uh, hair all over, after fixing the hairline, I put um, Agnes Earth shade because this will give it this will give it some shading that's very uh, very interesting on brownish hair. So at the moment the hair you can leave it like this, or you can do some dry brushing with a grey color. Uh, if you want to make him older but for the moment as I mentioned I just finished the, the hairline and then I applied all over the aggressive shade and we let, letting it dry uh, obviously quite a bit then on the body I um, airbrushed uh, nice yellow all over his coat it's obviously not uh, so much fun yellow but uh, some uh, brown yellow color and uh, now on this harness I'm gonna make it darker and I was thinking of using um, uh, wildwood which is uh, primarily a brown uh, quite a dark brown and again, because I need to let it dry, I'm just gonna do it now and then, uh, so I'm not painting anymore today. It will be just in time for it to dry. It's a contrast, so because it's a contrast, it will beautifully go into all the details, you see? Pay attention to what you're doing, I'm applying it by hand, I'm not masking anymore, I not a big fan of masking anyway so just stay within the lines and um, because again because it's a bigger model i'm using a fatter brush than what i would normally use for something like this Then I'll see what we'll do with the margins. I never know what to do with the margins when we're talking about busts. I so if you have any idea, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, I think in the past I just did them black, and I kind of like the the effect. But I, I never know what you're supposed to do with them. After it dries, I will have to do some more finessing because you see where the jacket meet, meets the coat, there is some color transfer, that's inevitable even with 
with all the masking and it's not the end of the world because you just uh, fix it with a final brush once uh, the model is done. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna continue the harness around it. For the rest of the bust, I just masked it and spray painted some black on the sides. I never know what to do with the sides, so I thought I'll just uh, spray paint it black. And it will look something like this, which is interesting enough. Still need to do the buttons, so actually I'm thinking I'm doing gonna do this uh, silver and do this one um, in golden. So we're gonna use some some silver for the buttons of the shirt, and then I'm actually going to use this, which is like a dry brush for this button. Now there are some corrections we need to do, so where I spray painted it and it didn't go too well. I'm just gonna use the same blue. I have some white handy in case it's too black, but because it's at the joints where the coat meets, meets the shirt, it should be good enough. Yeah, it blends well enough, so I'm not gonna bother diluting it to make it lighter. Yeah, and I also made a mistake where I, when I did this button, so it will be the same, I'm just going slowly around it. And covering it up. Skin tone wise, uh, there are very few things uh, we're gonna change. I had some fails here, I'm obviously not gonna redo them again, for whatever reason there are some holes uh, gonna make him bloody and uh, that's it. But as I was saying some time ago, if you are a beginner, this is, this is what you want to look for. 
so you can see first of all the I hope the camera captures them you can see the details in the skin and especially you can see the details in the eye that will make painting the eyes uh, extremely easy so what you see it's actually a hole for the pupil so you just drop some black in it and this part which is already carved out and um, how can I say already made 3D you're just gonna paint them with uh, some color brown in this case I'm actually going to try another method for the eyes we'll see if it works I'll leave it in if not uh, just do the regular process we're normally doing now um, I was saying that the process will be pretty much the same. I'm applying a base uh, layer, which is a mix of these four colors from a painter, four uh, from this each, and one and one. Gonna let it dry. Then I'm gonna dry brush with something like this, a very big fluffy brush with a lighter color, but probably mixed a little bit with this because he uh, he's not such, um, such a light skinned person. And um, as a general rule, Latino people tend to have a little bit more warmth in their skin. Warmth means they have yellow. After I do the dry, dry brushing, I will do the speckling uh, with, you know, this color and the uh, better brush and we, you just pat it with a brush. But after that dries, I'm going to be applying this tan glaze, which is obviously a yellow glaze. I'm going to be applying it more like a wash which is a step I no not normally do. When you want to give a tint of uh, tan or a tint of warmth to the skin, this is very, very good. Just apply it all over. For the hair, because he's more uh, older, let's say, in the, um, in the TV show, I'm actually going to apply all over the Mechanical Standard Grey and then most likely shade with um, uh, Earth Shade, Agress Earth Shade, and do some highlight with uh, dry stone or some gray as well. For the beard, most likely we're gonna be using um, watercolor pencil because it's easier and pastels. The process is 90% similar. The only difference is that we're gonna be applying the tan glaze, which you don't normally do, and the hair will also going to be made with um, mechanical standard gray. You've noticed that hair on the face, I never tend to do with paint because I think it's difficult to control. I'd rather go uh, into the pencils and the pastels and mix them together. Now, even if it's a larger model, obviously, um, I told you that uh, paint for Mami Painter is excellent in terms of coverage and, um, and the way it mixes and the way it behaves. So I'm actually just going to be using a bigger brush to apply it uh, all over where the face, where the skin is, and normally let it dry.
Yeah, and as I mentioned before, just because this paint is so good, um, you can see how smooth it is. So it looks airbrushed, although we haven't airbrushed it. Let it dry because it needs to dry well before we move to the next steps. And because I need to let it dry, I'm actually going to do the uh, the hair as well with Mechanical Standard Grey because that also needs to uh, to be very well uh, to be very well dry before we move to something else, not to contaminate other paints. And um, just work on something else while. This is the rank. Now you are noticing I haven't finished the hairline. That's because when we're gonna do the dry brushing and everything, the hair will anyhow get uh, dirty with flesh tone again. So I won't be doing that until the very end after I apply this and I know I have uh, finished pretty much with the paints. And then I'm gonna be using something like a very fine brush to do all the details and individual uh, uh, hairs that are uh, along the perimeter of the face. Now I just want the big base uh, down so it can uh, have some time to dry. Now, this is quite dry, meaning I can move on to the next step. I'm actually, uh, as I mentioned, because the actor is, doesn't have such fair skin, we're not gonna go straight on with uh, dry brushing with this, what uh, I normally tend to do. I'm actually going to create again the base color and then add uh, one and one to it. Um, I'm gonna create it uh, with a little bit more uh, quantity, so probably half what I've done the first time, meaning I'm gonna do these little dots a little bit smaller. The proportions are the same, four, four from Dorado and Topaz and uh, one and one for the rest. Okay, that was probably enough. And I'm gonna add one and one of this. I can probably go lighter, but I'd rather go in stages rather than uh, go to light all of a sudden. The bigger the model, the softer the transitions you need to make. So that's something to keep in mind. The softer the transitions between the colors, because and the big brush, yeah? because you are able to see them, so you don't need that much um, 
that that much uh, difference between the colors to get the to get them showing. As always, I don't know how it is. I start, yeah, I started the other year. It's fine. I'm just gonna dry brush it. I can probably go with another layer with an even uh, lighter color, and I think I'll do that. So for the moment, I'm just sticking to this one because I like it. And what's happening now is that the base layer that we have put down, which was darker, will remain in all the sculpted pores. I'm hoping you can see it. Yeah. So you see all the pores are now with this darker color and I'm just getting a lighter tone on top of it. So this is very nice. You see how airbrushed it look. It looks, and uh, I'm gonna create some more. And I brush this one lighter. Obviously, if you're, let's say, painting for yourself, it's a good idea to have these colors already premixed. Um, obviously, it will depend on uh, on the characters you you're normally painting but if uh, for me 90 percent of them are exactly the same so i pretty much always use the same colors that's why i'm not uh, insisting too much on the painting process of the face lately you see what the new one is doing it's again just picking up picking up the highlights i'm actually using it as a dry brush here yeah? so the brush is dry i'm wiping it off the mouth you go uh, left to right on the top, ideally you go top to bottom, and you can go like this, around his nose. On top of the nose you can go. Don't forget the ears, don't forget the neck. the camera is picking up the different nuances. And just with a little bit, by, but the tiniest bit of uh, the regular highlight. Very light hand. Yeah, very, very light hand. You see how I'm keeping it? Keep the brush away and just uh, very lightly touch the skin. Now we're gonna move on to the speckling. So for the speckling you want to use a better brush, you need something stiff. Uh, I'm using Rayland, Rayland Flesh Shading Gloss because I absolutely love the effect it gives. And you need a small uh, sponge to, um, to pat it off. My cat keeps attacking it, one of the cats, so that's why it looks, uh, that's why that's my little sponge. But it's gonna be good enough. The process is the same as always. I'm keeping the I've wet the brush, meaning the brush is a little bit diluted. I'm gonna shake and 
put some paint on put some more water if I believe it needs to and then slowly flicker it so flicker it and then pet 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 don't drag don't go left right pet 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 because you want the smallest effect of uh, freckles or something on his skin So this is it after the speckling. As you've noticed, I like to take my time uh, on this step because I think it makes a lot of difference. If you look at the skin now and the skin texture and how nice it looks, it, uh, it does make a difference in my opinion. And uh, as you've all noticed, I tend to apply it around the perimeter more intensely, but anyhow, all throughout. Don't try to contour with it, so don't go more intensely under the uh, under the jawline or under the cheekbones because you don't have more skin defects in those areas. Uh, the unevenness that we have, if you look even if you're on your skin, on your, um, on your, on your arm, it's all over. So you want to apply this all over and I like to go in passes. It, it's always easier to build up rather than take off. That's why I start with a wet brush start small because it's a bigger model I could do the speckles a little bit rougher and uh, the effect is still nice and then I just went again and again where I thought it needed more intensity until I got to this step and 
Now, as I mentioned, we're doing this step with the 10 glaze. And because this also needs to dry, I'm going to be doing the hairline with mechanical standard grey because we're pretty much done with the wet colors. For the hairline, as I mentioned, I'm using this and I'll most likely do it off, 100% do it offline because you need to get a magnifying glass and get up close in order to be able to do everything. The whole idea is to follow what is painted and don't go with blocks of color. Just small, small, small strokes with a paint that's quite diluted. Uh, you've noticed when I applied it on the hair as well, it was quite diluted. So, for this I'm just... putting a little bit of this down. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be using it as a wash to get my brush, the brush I used for the base. So anyhow, I'm using a, big, a bigger brush, wetting it. Don't know how it will behave, go on the back. So this is enough. Yeah, you don't want him to be overly yellow. But you want this yellow tint now all over his skin. You can always pet it off if you feel like you need petting uh, to be petted off. I feel I need to dilute it some more. Don't let it pull uh, intensively, you want a hint of color to the skin, that's all. Like I did now, so I'll have to remove this. It's a subtle difference, as you can see, but it's there and it makes, uh, it will help with the realism, especially that, you know, even if you're not a painter, you still see people all around, you see them on TV, and when something is off, your mind will automatically record it, and you're just gonna say, oh, it looks off, even if you can't tell why. So, uh, when you're doing actors, try to look at their pictures and you don't need to go into color theory that, that much, but just try to get the, the tone right. You don't want to make them too yellow and you don't want to make them too pink or um, too cool toned. As I mentioned, don't let it pull, it's not pulling anywhere. So I just applied it. All over. Do the hairline and let it dry. So moving on to the eyes now. And uh, the process is similar to everything that you have seen before. And we're actually going to be... Uh, I'll be linking below the more detailed tutorial. Starting with black, we're gonna line up our lash line. And because we have those pupil already, you just want to drop some black inside it. And then mixing black, blue and uh, whitish, you're gonna paint the white of the eye. And then for the um, color of the iris, we're actually gonna apply some, uh, obviously, brown, mixture of brown and gold. 
you need to get up close, you need a magnifying glass and uh, pay very much attention to what you're doing. So this is the first step, I lined up a lash line with black. Now I'm gonna do the white of the eye with um, with white and black. This is the second step, so as you can see I just put the white of the eye and I drop some black uh, where the sculpt was for the pupil. Now I'm just gonna put some brown all throughout. I have been experimenting lately with new methods to do the eyes. Um, as you can see, they are a little bit different to what we normally do. What has always bothered me about the acrylics is that because we're working with something so small, they uh, dry very fast and you don't have a smooth transition between the colors. Also, obviously, if you make any mistake because it's paint, uh, you need to go into the white and correct it with the white uh, and everything. So, I uh, this isn't the formal tutorial, this is actually the second time I'm doing, um, I'm doing this method. I'll do a more proper tutorial at some point, but uh, you probably can figure out what's happening. If you want, you can experiment with this on your own. I'll be using pencils to, to color in the eyes. The, the main advantage is that obviously you can make mistakes and you can blend them very well. So if you want to do like, a, a, let's say a darker green and slowly blend it in. You see, it's much more easier. And you can always come back with paint afterwards and um, uh, with water, sorry, with water afterwards and correct it if you don't like it. Yeah, you know, because all you have to do is water the brush and it will blend just right out. So you don't have to worry about pretty much anything, you know, when it comes to painting ice anymore. So what I want to do now, I put some brown color on, this brown, and then I put something like uh, yellow, not this one, I think it's underneath, to create some dimensions. But now what I'm doing is that I'm going towards the rim and make the rim darker and also do little lines inside. So don't do the white lines in, but do the dark lines in to get some more of a 3D effect. I'll be playing with it some more, so eventually I will come with a proper video for this. Uh, but going forward, I'm pretty sure this is the method I'll be using, going away completely from uh, paints when doing the eyes. Brown eyes actually tend to have um, some red in them, although we don't actually perceive it. But um, it's, uh, it's there, if you look at people with red hair, and how the brown eyes pop, it's because we have, because the brown that's in it has a, has a little bit of red. So we, we can actually add this to create some dimension, not a lot. Yeah, you don't want to give him red eyes, but just blend it a little bit with the brown. It will make it look very natural. And again, you made a mistake, like something happened here. I can just wipe it off. The highlight you can do with any any yellow. I'm still experimenting, as I've mentioned, to, to see what which yellow I like the most. In the eyes, we tend to have colors that are not saturated, meaning they're not that vibrant. So I think something like this will probably work the best. And uh, you probably noticed I tend to do a highlight around the black of the eye. Not really showing up intensively, but on the other hand, it will look more natural. The color needs to be a little bit um, thicker. So, as you can see, I'm not using it very, very light or very washed. Still want some more yellow. You want to use, um, 
you want to use the color a little bit thicker. I'll show you on my hand immediately what I mean. So for example, this is too diluted. You wet your brush and then you wipe your brush on the pencil until it gets thicker. You see, this is bad. Okay, like this yellow more. And you see, you see the blending in the eye. It would be very difficult to get it otherwise. Okay, so I want to move this yellow here. Move away a color I don't normally use. These are, will be very nice for uh, blue and green eyes. I can't wait to test them. It, be, it should be very interesting. It's also way easier when uh, doing the eyelashes, the bottom eyelashes, because that's one part I um, you needed to pay a lot of attention. You can, it was very easy to to mess up and have them wonky. But now I'm just here, I'm with a very fine brush already. You can see how many, uh, how little lines I can do. And it's very easy to do this, you see? And again, you don't like it, you can just wipe them off. And they will wipe off. Obviously this requires uh, a little bit of a, a change in the steps or uh, because you can't do pastels if you're using uh, anything wet. That's why I haven't applied the pastels yet, which I normally do, would have done, let's say, until this stage. You can see the eyelashes. It's actually a little, you have more, more control on them. You remember with the eyelashes, you need to do something like a comma and don't do them evenly. The, we usually tend to have patches that appear uh, appear darker that are grouped together. So don't do them more like this. Do them like this. And you can see how easy it is with this pencil. Uh, obviously, because we're gonna seal it, if you want to, if you want to. Uh, if you seal it with a um, satin varnish at the end, you can even manipulate the toys pretty without any form of concern afterwards, and the pencil will not dry off. So you can see, for example, here I think it's uh, the patch I did here, it's too much. I just wet my brush, put it in, and I can wipe it right off. You can't do that with paint. Yes, fixing something like this would have been a disaster. Yeah. And I'm thinking now, I also want to put down some base for his... Um, uh, for the hair on his face. Yeah. So I'm doing like a wash, let's say. with the pencil. I'll especially have to do it here. On his beard on his moustache, because he has a darker moustache. Ah, and another thing I didn't like about using paints on the eyes is that you need to use brushes that are this small and uh, just destroy them so fast. I mean, you could have used a brush maybe, I don't know, 10 times, 10 to 15 times, and then they would have been destroyed. And the small ones are expensive, that's why I was trying to find another another way to to do them. 
And I think pencils, for me at least, is the way to go. Okay, so uh, using this fine brush and the black pencil, you see I'm only with the black pencil, I'll actually be going uh, on the hair now, just to have some dimension. Now I'm pretty much done with the eyes, so I'm gonna move on to the watercolor pencil and the, and the pastels. I am not changing anything there. Uh, we're doing the purple watercolor for all the wrinkles now, and then we're gonna move on to the pastels. The pastels are next, obviously. Um, I've done the waterline with uh, with red as well. I've been doing that a little. Nothing changes for the moment with the pastel except the fact that because it's a it's a bigger model, we're gonna use some bigger brushes. So it's 
obviously apply it to what you have if you're printing the smaller or the regular brushes are helpful. I am doing, uh, let's say, a little bit of a orange coating because, as I mentioned, that there is a little bit more uh, warm toned, but not too much. And uh, you remember the yellow, the orange, tends to go primarily on on the forehead. I want to use some on his lips actually as well. So I'm using a darker orange. Yeah. No. The brown and the purple goes the same around the perimeter. Just a bigger brush for the for the face. When we go into the eyes, we're gonna be using the small brush. Actually, the rest is the same. Just the brush changes a little bit.
Now I'm gonna apply the eye gloss, it's uh, alt gold as always. And um, I'm gonna apply it slightly differently because as I mentioned, everything else, everything in the eye is sculpted. So what you actually want to do is drop a lot of color where the black part is and then slowly build it up to, to cover the whole thing and then put on the white parts. So you need to build it up and then let it dry like this. I'll probably put something underneath it so it wouldn't move around as it will, it will be a lot of paint, uh, paint inside the eye. So you can see how it looks, you know, as I mentioned, it's a lot of paint and uh, you want it like this in order for it to look, uh, to look interesting because that will actually mimic uh, the transparent part we have in our eyes. It will obviously not remain like this, it will dry clear, but you need to let it dry. So if we tilt this head now, it will all move, move around and you don't want that. That's why I leave it aside. 
in this case I'll put something underneath for it to make sure it stays exactly like this until it becomes clear and it doesn't move anymore. Yes, and this is actually it. The head is still drying. So we're gonna let it dry, but that's it. As I mentioned, actually, if you want, you can use some dry brush on his hair and on his beard to make him older. I'm not that convinced yet, although it would be more movie accurate, I'll think about it. For the moment, it will just remain like this. <laughs> 